We're rolling. I'm ready. We're rolling. You guys should see this janky setup. We got camera one right there. Hi, camera one. Camera two right there. Hi, camera two. Camera three right there. Hi, camera three. We're stuck together with suction cups and magnets, but I think we're going to make a video. There you go. All right, guys. Welcome back to Baby Back Maniac. Today we are doing a review of our seven day cruise on the Liberty of the Seas. If you guys haven't been following, we have a whole playlist of our vacation. We'd love you guys to check this out. It's been a great cruise so far. Yeah, so. I mean, we um, took a seven day cruise. Like Justin said, we've been to Cozumel, Mexico, uh, Georgetown, Cayman Islands, and yeah. then Falmouth, Jamaica. Probably gonna be a long video. We're gonna break it down into manageable bites and put it in a table of contents below. So you can jump to whatever part you have questions about. You can skip around. Hopefully you'll find that useful and helpful. So where yeah. do you wanna start? Well, tell us about just the ship physically. Okay. So Liberty of the Seas is a wonderful ship. Biggest ship we've ever been on. 140,000 tons, I think is what. I think that's what the fun fact sheet said. <laughs> yeah, hey, this is the biggest girl we've ever, we've ever ridden on. That sounded weird. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Demonetized. <laughs> this is the biggest ship we've ever gone on. on. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, a lot better. Um, sailed and, on. Yeah. It sailed on, yeah. And she, <laughs> this is the biggest ship. I like this boat. <laughs> <laughs> this is the biggest ship we've ever been on. It holds 4,000 passengers, um, about 1,500 crew members, and the, the, this is the part that gets me. Tell us how fast it goes and how much gas and yeah. fuel it uses. So it's 1,100 feet long, 125 feet wide, roughly and it goes 26 miles per hour at top speed. And when it's doing that, it burns 31,000 gallons of fuel an hour. So. Can you imagine that in uh, this day and age is cost of uh, fuel? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Thanks, Biden. Oh, no, did I say that? Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, it's just, a, she's just a, a big ship. And um, how old is she? 15 years old. Um, she's very well maintained. There's a lot of things to do on it. Um, one of the things that's noticeable about this ship is uh, the promenade is super cool. You walk into the ship and there's this open area with, it's almost like a shopping mall inside the middle of the heart of the ship where you can get coffee or like cupcakes or buy jewelry. Ben and Jerry's, ice Alcohol, cream, whatever you want. Your is, normal souvenir stores. Right, pizza, it's, there's a pizza place and the pizza is, is actually included. It's really good too. Yeah, um, yeah. That's really nice. Then up top on the back, there's a water slide, a boogie board machine, basketball courts, rock climbing walls. There's ice skating rings. I mean, they're- Putt putt. Putt putt golf, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, there's a helicopter pad. Yeah, there's an ice skating rink inside the ship. Yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy. Like, I mean, we've come a long way from, you know, the minnow on Gilligan's Island. That's yeah, for there's sure. definitely um, no lack of things to do and, yeah. and entertainment. There's more than you'd ever want to do. Yeah. Do you want to talk about the state of the ship? Yeah, the ship was supposed to go in dry dock when COVID hit. So. I would say she's in good condition. She's 15 years old. They, I mean, they maintain it. It's nice. It's clean. There's not. It's not dirty or like. But you were describing it earlier. You were like, it just. It definitely needs a facelift, right? It was built in 2006, 2007, and it looks like it. A lot of peach and green colors. Um, and I know that the newer ships have the solid navy and kind of just a more serene updated feel yeah this is it. cruisy kitsch a little bit i think so yeah but again it's super clean it, it is like i said it's not the analogy i have is like your grandmother's 15 year old cadillac you know she never drives it anywhere so it's like super it's in perfect condition for a 15 year old cadillac that's yeah kind of yeah, how it, it, is. it so is good good ship um again plenty to do there's no real complaints about the ship. Well, there's um, plenty to do, but there's also some things that are a little bit more low key, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it. not just rock climbing walls. I mean, if you want to chill out, find some corner of, the ship, corner of the ship and just watch the waves go by, you can do that too. I mean, there's plenty of places. It doesn't feel like there's 5,000 people or 6,000 people on board. I felt like on the smaller ships that we've been on that it's been more 
congested and we've had to wait in lines for a long period of time. Um, and this ship, even though it's got way more people in it, and there has been lines, but the lines have moved a lot faster. Yeah. So I don't feel like it's as congested. I haven't felt like I've had been on top of anyone. No. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, there's, except for like the swimming pools during the day, it's not really even all that crowded. No, and kids don't care if they're, yeah. they're you know, having to wait in line for a water ride. Um, what about the service? Okay, I think service is Royal Caribbean's, like, I think it's their strong point. And I'm going to say that for a couple of reasons. One, like most cruise ships, you have your stateroom attendant that comes in, like a ninja, like a couple times a day, cleans your room. I mean, one time I think he did it when I was in the bathroom. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> I know he didn't. He's actually a really, really nice guy. But they come in and they clean up and they smile and they see you and they're so friendly. And it's just a really, really nice. We have a towel friend. We do. Let's go meet him. You come back in your room and air conditioning's on, the bed's made and everything's put away. And it's just, I, I just love that. And I, you were saying that, you know, they, they're either like just genuinely really nice or they're- Oh they're, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like that also in, in the dining room. Like they're really friendly. I think so I'm, they try to remember your name and- Good morning, how are you? <laughs> Hi. Sir, good evening. Yeah, how are you? Hello. Hey, good morning. How are you guys? Good Good to, see, good to see you again. And and to what she was saying, like, I don't know how people are genuinely that nice. I mean, they're either the best fakers on the planet, or Royal Caribbean just did their homework when they were when they were like they really found good people. Yeah. Like it's probably it, a little both. There are probably yeah. some fakers and some. And that's across the entire ship. I think that there's <laughs> some really good service people in the ship. Totally. I mean, I think again, I think services is, is this is what Royal Caribbean. Does but I worked in the service industry before, and I know how frustrating people can be. And I, I mean, I have a temperament where I can handle it, but at some point you're like, enough's enough. These people are just, they're, they're great. They're really, really nice people. And I, I it's a highlight for sure. Yeah. How yeah. about entertainment? Uh, entertainment. <laughs> um, there is abundance of it. There are all kinds of things that you can do and enjoy. And I honestly think that if you, we're on this cruise. If you if you did this cruise three times, you still couldn't experience even close to all of it. Um, so there's. I mean, like there is a there's an app, and then there's a sheet of information uh, that's given every single day of everything that you can do on the ship. Right, and there's <laughs> it's funny. There's games. There's game shows. There's yeah. movies. There's parties. Parties. There's music, drinking games. There's alcohol, alcoholic anonymous meetings. Like, yeah, I mean, you got all extremes. There's family friendly karaoke. There's, there's adult not family karaoke. friendly karaoke. Yeah. I mean, whatever you want to find to do. You'll, you, I even said this the other day to her at dinner. I was like, you could actually go on a cruise by yourself and be entertained Probably if you were. Probably so. I think we've met a couple of people you know, singles, that. Yeah. yeah, that have been on the ship. Mm. Um, now, the actual like professional entertainment, the shows. That top notch, like, like I mean it. I, we did, again, we've done a few cruises in our time, and this was so good. I mean, Brian Cheatham, who was an American ha American Got Talent, America's Got Talent semifinalist, was one of the first ones we saw live. And I, I you're just not going to get cruise ship entertainment. No, better I mean than that guy. his his he he was a singer and. His range of vocal ability was yeah. just wow. He, I mean, he's he's amazing. Like he's really super talented, and he has this positivity and energy about him that it was. I mean, it was just really cool to watch him. Like I, I feel like I feel like that was special. Um, I even bought a CD, and I don't yeah. do that kind of thing. Yeah, good job. If you ever see this, Brian, he's, good job. He's he, yeah. good job. Yeah, very. Good. Um, we also saw ice skating dancers, which I would never have said before that I think is kind of the coolest thing ever. But those people were incredible. And we were like on the first row and they were able to spin and do things and they threw girls up in the air and they landed on their feet. And Yeah, that I mean, is the that, only show that you have to make reservations for because the, the studio is smaller than the normal um, right. showrooms. Um, but yeah, like it was, Yeah, I got a little, 
I mean, I was a little vocal during the show because okay. I was so like dumbfounded <laughs> by some of the tricks that they did. At one point, there was this couple. We later found out they were a couple. The guy grabbed a girl by like her shoelaces. It's probably her skates <laughs> or something. And he, she was he was spinning her around, and every time her head came around, it was like this high off the ground and I heard her, I was sitting right next to her and she was going, whoa, 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 whoa. And then he flips her up in the air and she like lands on her feet and afterwards she said happy birthday. It was his birthday. It was really it sweet. It was crazy. Yeah. I mean, but because it's, it's a small, I mean, what'd you say? 50 feet by 50 feet? Is that what you said? Yeah, maybe 35 by 50. It's a really small ice skating rink because it's on a boat, you know? And they were able to make so much use of that space and they, they were really good too. Yeah, and, and then, then Ethan and I caught on TV a comedian uh, named Etta May. Yeah. She was funny as well. And then the we singers had, and dancers. Were we good. had singer and dancers. Yeah. There was like a, a Saturday Night Fever thing. Yeah. Right. I think if you ever, if you take the time to go to the live entertainment, I think you're going to enjoy it. And we've seen bad cruise ship entertainment. We've gone to watch singers who are actually Millie Vanillying it, pretending to sing. Oh, and we've they seen, were they were playing tapes we've underneath seen them. Showgirls. This is not like it's oh yeah bad. yeah it's yeah. Been, this is not bad. This is really good. Cruise yeah. Ship what about food? Food is okay. So there's a lot of places you can eat. There's a lot of specialty restaurants. We have stuck to mostly the stuff that comes with the with the cruise ship. So you have the main dining hall, you can get pizza at any time, any day. Again, the pizza's really, really good. Um, Ethan's probably eaten his weight in pizza this week. I've asked him to. Yeah, <laughs> and you have a really nice crust on it. And so it's like, it's it's good. Again, we've had bad cruise ship pizza and this isn't bad cruise ship pizza. Yeah, and then they have coffee. Coffee, yeah. Um, which um, has been important to me because, uh, you know, they have different options for your coffee too. So they have the regular coffee or you can buy the Starbucks type right. coffee. Um, they have your different creamers and, you know, your almond milk and your lactose-free milk if you need it. They've got your Splenda, your, yeah. all your different sweeteners. Yeah. Um, uh, um, then the wind jammer. Yeah. The wind we jammer. only went to the main dining hall once for lunch, and it was great. I mean, but we are more wind jammer people, which means the wind jammer is the buffet. So, guys, this is the wind jammer. This is the main, like, buffet, kind of the casual eating. But I thought I'd give you a look at what we eat for breakfast. Just because I thought some of y'all might find that interesting. What are you getting? Eating food. Going for the carbs. Good food. Straight for the car. Oh, you dropped the carbs. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Okay, cool. What'd you get? Got some eggs and corned beef hash. Oh, yeah. Looks good. She's hot. They have miles of everything. That's what I like about it. The line moves really, really fast. Even though there's a lot of people here, you're really not waiting in line much. I wouldn't say it's the best food I've ever had, but it's always B plus, A minus area. It's, it's B plus, A minus. It's a, a good place to be able to at least come and go whenever you want. You don't have to make reservations. So, yeah. you know, our, our schedule can be a little bit looser and that's kind of why we like it. Yeah. Also, like, they have different well, let's start here. You can get anything you need. Like if, you, if you're if you just basic and you want hamburgers, french fries, hot dogs, hot dogs chili they have cheese, that every night. fries, burgers, yeah. salads. But they also have like a theme night where you can get- They had like Caribbean night, they had Italian yeah. night, they had French night. There's also a different section that they taught. Yeah, Mediterranean night. They had a section that's um, it's always there. It's called Jade. It's kind of on the healthier side, and it also serves to dietary, like gluten-free yeah. diets and sugar-free diets. There are options there all every that. single time. Yeah, yeah, and then there's all, there's this huge dessert bar where you can like gork out if you want to, but 
We haven't been doing that. I, honestly, much. I think this is weird, but I think the desserts have been. We're, yeah, we're, I, I'm trying to avoid sugar. My son lives on it, but I'm tr like, this is. The, I've been lucky. It's not been tempting because it's not. It's not the best part of their food. Yeah, but yeah. it's okay. Yeah. If you need something sweet, it's it's perfect to go and grab just a little bite. So this is the one exception to the desserts that we didn't like or we didn't care for. This is really good. This is very good. Yeah, this is... Money. This is good. Mm. Look at that crust. I mean, that Yum. is fantastic looking crust. It's a, Yum. Soft it up. How is it? <laughs> Watch out, cheesecake factory. Yeah, this is good cheesecake. Yeah, and we had one night at the Windjammer where it was not good. Like, they were just not on their game. They made us late to one of our Ooh. shows. Yeah, but I'll tell you this, they were on top of it, and they didn't just let it slide. The manager came around and got feedback from us, and, and in, in the end, he actually made it, I mean, this is a sign of good service. Like, he made it better that they screwed up by the next night than had they not screwed up at all because he remembered her name and he came over and he checked on her and because I wasn't there whenever she was, he was talking to and her. And consider that, that's 4,000 guests. And yeah. like he re remembered my face, remembered my yeah. name and was able to go back and say, let's fix this. Yeah, I thought, well, you have a memorable face. Oh, well, thanks. I, I like your face. Um, where else? Where were we? Well, maybe we can. Um, so, going back to specialty restaurants, what type of specialty restaurants do they want? Okay, so they have, have like a. What does that mean? Okay, specialty Rex, there's. Where we ate is the stuff that comes with the ship. Like, it comes with your ticket. There's, I think, I, I'm. If I guess how many, I'm gonna lie, I'm gonna be wrong. There's many <laughs> upscale specialty restaurants where you can pay. It's not a little more. It's a lot more. Yeah, it's, it's like for Italian, somewhere between thirty and fifty bucks, maybe even a hundred head. per head. Um, that's why we're not doing it to get like more higher end food experience. And it's Italian steak, Mexican, yeah. and then they also have a Johnny Rocket. Yeah, and that's not as shit. expensive. But yeah, it's, I think it's like ten dollars a head there. Yeah. You can get milkshakes and everything else. So we we can't give you any feedback on that, but just wanted to let you know that it's there, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah. Is that cover I the food? I think that covers all of the food. Okay. Um, what about our excursions? All right, our itinerary was awesome. So we, we left Galveston, we putts across the Gulf for two days, and then we go to Cozumel, Mexico. Cozumel is a wonderful stop. It's a great place. There's plenty to do. Um, and if you're wondering, like, you, you can get around with, Eng like, they speak English. You know, they understand what you're saying. They deal with tourists all the time. You use American money. All that is fine. It's it's a little island. You could you could actually get rent a jeep or a scooter or something and just putz around and go exploring if you had enough time. And all kinds of little beaches. You can get you know like seafood on the beach and Alcohol or, or, I mean on the Mexican beach. food. Excuse me, not seafood. Uh, Mexican food on the beach. Um, we you know where, where was the beach we always used to go to get massages. I think we used to go to San Francisco Beach. San Francisco we, and and it's just a great place to hang out you know like i mean this is it's very low-key it's like i don't know what else all the things that i think cozumel by far is my favorite snorkeling location oh yeah that's what we did um, we snorkeled yeah. yeah we snorkeled and you know just to go back to all of the excursions that we do we usually book it away from the ship so you can book it with the ship or you can book it off of the ship yeah. just you know check your reviews and stuff like that so you're basically um, like just to be clear what she means is like you're booking locally with local companies before you leave that's what you're yeah, saying yeah and it's like half the price so um we went out on a little snort i'm sorry did were you no, did uh, we went on a little snorkeling tour to palancar reef which is some of the best scuba diving in the world and then we went to columbia, columbia sky reef and a place called el cielo so you can see uh, the starfish, yep. um, and then we even got to see stingrays this time. Yep, yep. That we was didn't cool. even know that we'd see that. Yep. Okay, so then we went to Cayman, and we did an excursion where we went and uh, snorkel was, uh, well, or excuse me, we went and uh, saw stingrays. Stingrays. Why well, can't I have a hard time stingray remembering city. stingrays the yeah. whole trip? And again, we'll have a video up here so you can go see that. You get to hold a freaking stingray in your hands. Holy crap, it's amazing. Or in my perspective, three of them. Yeah, she, the stingers really liked her. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, you are so sweet. <laughs> yes, you are. You are so sweet. Cayman again is, I mean, it's in all the movies, right? As being this beautiful place. And that's because it's a beautiful place. It's really, it's a really nice island. If you're going with kids, I would recommend Seven Mile Beach. It's the most beautiful beach ever. Like, it looks like the beach in the Corona commercials where mm -hmm. you're just sitting there and, you know, <laughs> just hanging out. I mean, just smooth sand for yeah. miles. I love this itinerary. I really, really do. Um, lots of stuff to do there. And totally, if you can swing Cayman, absolutely do it. Did you just spit in the ocean? Yes. I am telling the ocean police. <laughs> you're, you're polluting Cayman. And then our last day, we went to Jamaica and we stayed at a resort there, the Hilton... Rose Hall Rose in Hall. Montego Bay. Again, I should go back and say again, none of this stuff is sponsored. We paid for all of this, just so you, just so that's clear. One of the nicest resorts we've ever been on. Absolutely. Now, Jamaica's a little different from the other two, and there's, I mean, there's no other way to say it except it's, I mean, the sour bus driver put it, it's an impoverished country, and there are problems that come with that, and it's more like, it's not a place that I would say, go grab a Jeep and go exploring, because there's really nothing to do if you get away from the port you know, and if you don't know where you're and going. if you don't know where you're going, the roads aren't great. The, that is the scariest place to drive because they drive on the left side of the road. Sometimes the roads aren't great, and and they have like their own set of rules there. So I would say, um, if you when you go to Jamaica, either do a uh, excursion with the ship or do like we did and stay at a resort. Now I will say this: I freaking love Jamaica. Like I feel like Jamaica is one of the coolest islands. That I mean, it has its own culture. It's got its own language. It's the most beautiful of the three islands we went to. They've been the victims of a lot of corruption and problems in the past, and, and Jamaica just hasn't really been able to get its footing, but I'm hoping that turns around because I could see a day coming. That island is so pretty with the mountains and the beaches and the coffee and all, like, the, again, it's just such a great place. I could see it being like Maui, Maui to the east, yeah. you know? Like, I, I, like, there's no reason it shouldn't be as fun to come to as, as Hawaii and uh, so anyways Jamaica's great but right for now stay with the cruise itineraries and stuff like that or cruise excursions and stuff like definitely that. or stay yeah. on the ship either uh, way yeah yeah so let's talk about the, the room our room okay our particular room is probably one of the smallest rooms we saw with an outside balcony um, I think it's a little under 200 square feet yeah what do we pay just so the... I think we paid a little over a thousand per person. Okay, and we have three people yeah. in a room, and it's, yeah, how many square feet did you just say? I I'm think sorry. it's a little under 200 square feet. 200 square feet, it feels bigger than that. Um, I, I think, honestly, I think the size is great for two people. Um, I think it's a little tight for three people, um, especially when we're changing clothes or whatever, yeah. you know? <laughs> hey, I'm taking my pants off. <laughs> um, there are a few things that that we would change about it. Uh, they they only have two outlets. So bring an extension cord. Bring an extension cord and bring a non surge protecting uh, power strip because surge protecting actually something about the way the boat is grounded, like it, it actually has the opposite of effect of what you think it would. It causes more problems. <laughs> the shower is a little small. I mean, the showers are small and yeah. Okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna tell my secret. Yeah, go ahead and tell me your secret. Okay, the showers are small, and I usually just pack a little you know bag and head over to the gym because their showers are a little bit bigger, and then there's extra towels and stuff there, so I feel like I can spread out a little bit better. There. Yeah, yeah. But don't everybody go run into the gyms because I want my gym. <laughs> I want my gym shower. And I fought through it in the regular shower, and it's fine. And, and to some extent, you know, that's ship life. And I know there's some guys out there in the navy that are like, "Oh, we're not, you should back in back in Nam when I was all yeah. I destroy your." No, well, the thing is, is this mug has a freaking ice skating ring, right? You can put more than two outlets, and you can make the potty bigger. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, that's. That's that like the shower can be big enough to where you can actually raise your arms without bumping your elbows against the wall. I don't think that's unreasonable yeah. in this day and age. I'm not complaining. It wouldn't stop me from making the trip. But again, we're just being clear. We're trying to explain, give you expectations so that when you get here, you won't go, why didn't they tell us about that? Right. The showers are small. You can book it down to the gym and get a bigger one. 
Um, it's just something to be aware of. There are only two outlets, you know, there's no way around it. I don't know why they make it where everybody has to bring in a power strip instead of them just making the ships with more outlets. Maybe they do these days. Yeah, I don't know. But it is one of those things that I would change if we could. Yeah, so I think this is a service kind of thing, but it's also a room thing for families. Um, they do make those little towel animals. Uh, we've had a little towel am animal yeah. uh, awaiting us at nighttime just about every other day. I know some people like them every day, but they're every other day. And it's kind of a cute little surprise to have. See, that replaces the dog while we're gone. Until I need to take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then the, the room cleaning every twice a day is... Hey, I'll yeah. take that any time. That's cool. Uh, what about the fridge? There was a little mini oh, fridge in yeah, there, too. Yeah, that was another thing. It's like, there's a little mini fridge. Thank you. That's great. It only goes down to 55 degrees, which is not cold enough for anything. You know, it's like, it's almost more like a just a shelf to put your drinks in yeah. than an actual refrigerator. Minimum temperature of this cooler mini bar is 55 degrees Fahrenheit. That's not a thing. Okay, so let's jump to frequently asked questions. So our first frequently asked question was about laundry. And frankly, it is so confusing that even us trying to explain it live sounded confusing. So I'm going to just do a voiceover here to try to speed things up a little bit. In a nutshell, if it's not obvious, if you're willing to do your laundry once on the trip, you can literally pack half as much luggage and that can add up, especially on a seven day cruise like this. But the problem is Royal Caribbean won't let you do your own laundry. They want to do it for you and they want to charge you an arm and a leg and a kidney and your firstborn. It's ridiculous and their communication is terrible. So you go to their website and one place it'll say they charge you by the item. So it's two bucks for socks. It's five bucks for a shirt. Screw you. you know, but in another place it says it's all they all you can fit in a bag they'll do for $25 or $35 or whatever it ends up being. And by the way, they don't show you the bag. So you have no idea. And by the way, it's a tiny bag. So I, my advice is just bring all the clothes that you need for the trip. Don't worry about doing laundry unless you're loaded. And if you do have that kind of jack, congratulations. You can pay as much as they feel like charging you to clean your underwear that day. So there's your laundry talk for the day. Let's fast forward through the rest of this and get to the top 10 things we think you should bring that you'll find really helpful on this cruise. I don't know why we'd have accidents, but you know, you need you like know. extra undies. Yeah, so Justin mentioned that there are only two outlets. Um, so bring your non surge protector power strips. Yeah. Um, magnetic hooks or magnetic clips, like the ones that are really, really strong. Yeah. Um, uh, because basically, uh, you know, probably two thirds of your cabin is made out of magnets. So you can hang your like swimsuits or your towels to dry on those magnetic hooks. You can leave notes for your family that way. Yeah. Um, Ins you just grabbed your insulated water bottle or yeah. your cup so you can get some water while you're at the wind jammer or you know the pizza or coffee shop um, that is one thing about it um i'm gonna interrupt go for ahead. a second like the drink package we'll get to this in a second if you don't get the drink package you have water tea fruit punch sometimes lemonade not always or coffee and it's like in the food areas so you really need this but then they don't let you actually just fill it up because of, I guess, COVID. I think so. Um, because COVID spread sense. through cups. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's not how COVID spread. Um, you have to actually fill it up your little, their dinky cup and take it over and put it in your cup over and over and over again. So, but anyway, still, it doesn't change the fact that these are very beneficial. Um, beach towel clips. Mm -hmm. Those are really helpful and you can clamp them onto your chairs on your balcony or outside whenever you're actually sunning. Um, these have just been nice to clip around everywhere. Lanyards, um, that way it can hold your ship card. Yeah. Uh, Cause you need that ship card to go two places inside the ship and to embark and debark from the ship and to be able to buy anything. That's basically your ID card on the ship. Um, we had this little portable fan. Somebody recommended that on one of the pages and it has been amazing. You know, whenever you're standing in line, you can have a fan. Whenever you're going on excursions, you can have a fan. That was a that was a really good idea. Great. Yeah. Amazon. How much did it cost? Well, I think like. You can have the fan running in your 
bathroom because there isn't a fan in there. Um, and tag on to that, you probably want to bring like a can of air freshener too yeah. if you're going to be, you know, housed up with a few of your family members. She poops. I don't. So um, never. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then a couple of other things, just a collapsible laundry hamper. Um, that's nice to just dump all your clothes in there. Um, pen, notepad, people decorate their doors. Um, so if you want to do that, that way it can kind of stand out and then you can leave notes for your family members um, on the doors. Ducks, did we talk about the ducks? No, we didn't talk about ducks. Is it on here later? No, do you okay. want to talk about ducks? Well, there, well, you talk about the ducks because you know the situation. There's a game with the kids and everybody, I, go ahead and explain it. Yeah, I think you know about six or seven years ago, a, a dad and a kid got onto a a ship, it was a carnival ship, I think, and then they started leaving ducks with notes um, just for kind of a hide and seek game with little ducks. Whether they started out with rubber duckies, but I've seen on uh, the cruising ducks webpage that like people even like crochet ducks and you hide them all around the ship. Uh, you can't hide them, in, you have to do it in public places and not in the pools or in the shops. But then you see all these other kids coming around, they're searching for ducks, and, and then they get to keep it or they hide it. Yeah. Um, so it's just been kind of fun to, to see kids' faces whenever they find one. So bring rubber ducks. Yeah. Little rubber ducks. Um, I'm going to cure this actual. Okay. Quick. So let's go rewind all the way back to the embarkation. Process. Yeah. Some people have questions about embarkation, how that works. You go through a security checkpoint. There are long lines. They're trying to get 2,000 people or 4,000 people 4, onto this yeah. bus, and a bus, onto the ship in a couple hours. Therefore, there are long lines, but they move incredibly fast. It, it went really well. I, I didn't feel like I was just standing there sweating, waiting. Yeah, I don't think it could have gone any better. No. <laughs> We're here. Uh, did you have anything to talk about, like, you know, going through yeah, I just, or just the expectation is to stand in a line that's probably constantly moving. You're going to go through like a TSA checkpoint. You don't have to take off your shoes. But you do have to slide your stuff through a metal, metal. detector. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. And then getting on and off the ship whenever we're in embarkation, you just need your um, your sailing. No, yeah, that's card. Just sailing your, sign? Your, your card, your ship card. What do they call it? Ship sailor? They, I think it's sailing sign on on carnival, carnival but right. I think this they is give you a, a card a, a ship ID name. and that's all you need to get on and off yeah gangway welcome to Mexico the reason we say that is because it's not clear they said at one point you needed a photo ID of a government, government issue issued, yeah. so we left with our passports the first day thinking this was strange that we had to haul our passports around and then we get to the checkpoint and the guy's like you don't need our pa a passport right. what are you doing right no okay so money money yeah, how much, um, how much does it cost? All right, you can spend as much money as you want. <laughs> but what you're going to end up spending is uh, compared to, basically I want to talk about what's included and what's not, right? So you're going to need to pay, obviously, to get to Galveston or wherever you're porting out of. If you're going to go a day ahead of time, you're going to need to pay for a hotel. You're going to have to park your car. Sometimes your hotel that you stay at will keep your car for a week. Sometimes they won't. If not, you'll park at the pier. They do have good... Uh, shuttles running all the time to get you directly to the port. I would recommend that. That's what we did. It was seventy-five dollars, yeah. ninety dollars. It was ninety dollars, and we just parked at the the Galveston Pier. I looked for a coupon code, and we got another five dollars off. I've also heard that Easy Cruise parking is also a really good place yeah. to park. So those are two yeah. that you can. So that consider. was that was ninety bucks plus hotel plus plus travel. And then you're gonna pay for whatever it costs you to get your tickets on the ship. On top of that, you have you not, technically don't have to, but you should, don't be a douchebag. Tip your people who provide service for your room and dinner. Even if you don't go to dinner, they, they, I mean, they're away from their families and they live off tips. Go ahead and tip, and that's $15 a day. Yeah, it's fourteen fifty per person per day. Yeah, that is more or less what, what you're gonna be expected to pay. And then everything above that, I lost my thought. Did I miss yeah. anything here? No, I think that's it. I think just for me, just to make sure that you pack a lot of extra loose dollar bills, right? Yeah. Because every excursion that you go to, every place that you go, you'll probably want to tip somebody. Yeah. Because they, they're a service industry, so they're all going to work off of tips. Totally. And, and you want to support that. You really do. Um, because that's what makes your vacation, th those people and their friendliness and their helpfulness make your vacation more special. 
So yeah. Um, okay. So what costs extra? Okay. So there's a soda package. There's an alcohol package, and then there's like an internet package. There's two different internet packages. One is like basically just like texting, and one is like full internet. But um, streaming too. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm kind of of the opinion that like, I mean, this is just me talking to the Royal Caribbean. Like, we're in this day and age where a minimum amount of communication between family members is a safety issue, or it's a it's a convenience issue, and it's a vacation fun issue. Paying six dollars a day for eight days so that I can keep in touch with people on your gigantic boat, it seems it seems ridiculous. You should just eat those six bucks and let us stay in communication. Yeah, you know? and that's just to be able to text. Yeah. Yeah. Also, like I I, I kind of think that sodas should be either included or much cheaper than what they were. Um, I can't remember the price, but it did price us out because again, we're you were paying for all of us, all day. All, yeah. Everybody pays for the week, and yeah, I think um, it was twenty dollars a day per person for sodas. Was that it? I think something like that. It was. I mean, whatever it was, it wasn't worth it for you know a ninety-nine cent Coke every couple of, you know a couple of day. Yeah. So what so. we did was just bring carried on. Um, 12, you know, 12 packs of... Which they do let you do, to their credit. Um, And, you know, you're able to carry on two bottles of wine. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, but that, I I know they make a lot of money off that, so this is never going to change, but that was kind of a bummer. Um, But, yeah, Uh, so, but but again, you can either spend that money or not. We chose not to, and you can choose to spend it. If you're wondering, like, the the alcohol all you can drink thing was probably I think was it was 60 or 80 60 dollars yeah and if you <laughs> they they're smart if one person in your cabin gets it the other person has to get a drink package as well cuz they know you'll just split it and so basically it's the price of eight drinks i think is the pre- break even point somewhere between 6 and 8 drinks mm-hmm. um so you can use that to be your guide um how about food outside yeah. of the wind jammer? And then you can pay for food outside of the wind jammer, and that's all over the board. You can buy meal packages. If you know you're going to eat at the fancy restaurants every night, you could, you could pay up front for a discounted price to, to eat at the fancy restaurants every night, but it wasn't enough to be worth it. Yeah. Like, I mean, it was like, you know, if you miss one meal, yeah. you, you've lost money on that. So. And then the last But thing it's there is, for you. Yeah, you've got your short excursions, and, yeah, you and that's kind of a given, right? Exactly. Anything you do outside of the boat, you'll have to pay for. So that's the money situation yeah. right there. What are and some things that you would want to change? Okay, this one was, you mentioned this a couple of times. You can go ahead with this one. Yeah, smoking in the kids' area. I know they've got, like, two designated spots on the ship, but, like, one of them is the entire side of the ship where the kids are, like, playing. Okay, so this is the kids' area, and this is the smoking area. It just seems like there should be a better way. Yeah. And I just have a hard time with that. I mean, it yeah. smelled so bad, and, and I mean, we I, would just we would intentionally sit on the other side of the ship. But then I feel bad for all the parents that would be there yeah. with their with their kiddos, or just the kids getting secondhand smoke. Yeah, and technically it is outside, but it's not. Yeah, like like it's like the way the ship's designed the air stays there you know Mm -hmm. and it is right next to the kids play area so um that would be something i we find a place where it works for everybody you know but i feel bad for those new parents who are like especially the ones that are like super protective Uh, new mommies you know that would drive them crazy i didn't like the the deals that they would try to push on us early it, I don't think it was having the effect. It wasn't getting us excited. It was yeah, like, and we already talked about not having a, a laundry. All right, we are on the road. I had some thoughts, like, while we're in the moment. Our pre, pre-cruise experience, what are your thoughts so far? It has been a little stressful. A little bit. Uh, difficult to pack. Not used to that. Um, packing for the entire week instead of having the laundry service on the ship. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Usually when we go someplace, you know, you can you can do your laundry. And Royal Caribbean will do your laundry, but they charge an arm and a leg. And uh, that made it hard. That made it hard, right? Definitely a lot harder. I was running around trying to pack um, and very stressed out for the past two days. Yeah. So, not used to that. Yeah. I mean, not a big deal. The other thing is there's a lot of, like, decision anxiety that went into planning this cruise that... Um, I don't remember doing this on the last cruise, or even the last time we did RCL. Like, they're pummeling us with packages. Um, what was it? All the stuff, like... Oh, like internet package, drink package, coffee punch card, 
um, dinner package, uh, alcohol package. Yeah. Huge fear of missing out and then having to like run the numbers and feel like, like, I don't like, are we going to be on the boat and not be able to, I, there's certain things like, I feel like a basic level of internet, even on a cruise ship should be reasonably cheap. And, um, and like sodas probably should be included. They cost nothing, not, and so like the package is like 20 bucks a day for soft drinks, you know? And it's like, you need soft drinks that bad, <laughs> Definitely not. you know? So a little bit of like pre cruise anxiety, um, could have been better. I mean, not serious anxiety, just a lot of decision making that, I don't know, eh, you know, what can you do? Right, and then in addition to that, you know, we're still in the middle of the pandemic and so we had to test um, yesterday yeah, for COVID. Uh, so this is where it all starts. Yep, going to go get our COVID test. You looking forward to this, bud? No. Good job, buddy. <coughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That's not their fault though. That's just the world. No, that's not their fault yeah. at all. But I was a little nervous since all of my coworkers got COVID, you know, yeah. before last. Yeah. And I was with them. So. Yeah. But at this point, we're, you know, we're on our way. We're packed up. We're ready to go and excited about uh, going on a cruise. Right. 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 Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. Things that we would change. Balconies. Having a balcony is amazing, and it's worth it. And do it. Okay, back to our show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> balcony door doesn't lock. I think it's worth upgrading to the um, to the balcony. What do you think? Well, what? other than the fact that there aren't locks on the doors, yes. Wait, this doesn't lock? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Don't like that. That means anyone on this side of the ship can just like come across and like peek in the, peek in the, hi hey, baby. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. that's not good. I don't like that at all. And it's not necessary. We've been on other boats that have solid steel walls here. And these have these sliding plastic. They're kind of opaque like a yeah. plexiglass. Yeah. yeah, not good. Not yeah. good. Um, um, what, big TV screen. Oh yeah, the big, the big screen outside by the pool where they usually show movies and stuff at night is broken and they just aren't fixing or it. Or even TV shows during the yeah. day while you're swimming, right? Yeah. yeah, that was kind of a bummer. It's a bummer they sort of gave up on it. They're just Apparently waiting. Apparently, it's been years. And I'm years or months? I think it's been years, and I wonder if maybe they're waiting for a part or something that they can't. Not years. I don't know. They, if it's years, they're just waiting to take it into a dry dock. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, That's not, not, it's cool. not working. It's just not cool. That's not good. Um, How about raining? It rained on our first sea day. Oh, uh, yeah, this yeah. is actually no fun. Um, so, rain is, like, obviously, <laughs> Royal Caribbean, stop making it rain. No. Um, it did rain on our first sea day and they shut everything down for the rain, which made sense, but it cleared up in the afternoon and they kind of didn't open things up on our sea day. And that was, again, that was weird because when you asked them what they were doing, they said they were cleaning everything and they weren't <laughs> like, they physically weren't. Clean. Yeah. We could look at the stuff and it's not cleaning. It's just, there no one's cleaning it. It's yeah, just not They just operating. netted things off and, and you know, like, barricaded things off and yeah, it just was, had it shut down. They're doing all the cleaning. See how clean it is? They're in there cleaning. If it wasn't a sea day where there's not, that's when you want to do that stuff, it probably wouldn't matter. So yeah. again, and what was it? What was the last one? I think that was it. Okay. And again, just to clarify, these are things like, these are, this is the, the stuff that we didn't like. It doesn't mean we didn't like the cruise, yeah. you know, um, yeah. but these are the things that happened on our cruise that, that we would have liked to see changed. It's no more or less than that. Yeah. yeah. Three favorite things, favorite parts about it. Well, I, <sighs> I think my son would say the pizza. For sure, he would say the pizza. <laughs> it is good pizza. I mean, I, I even, I, yeah. I've had pizza every day as well as a snack, so I've enjoyed it. Uh, what was yours? Just everything. Just cruising is a great experience yeah. to be able, like you, you always said it, right? It's like a floating hotel. So you yeah. get to stay in the same room and go to all these different destinations. Yeah. It's, it's fun. And you called it like a reset. Everybody needs to get away from life and reset. For sure. And it, I mean, I think it's a wonderful way for a family to get away enjoy each other's company, do stuff they haven't done before, break out of their routine. Like, uh, and this cruise is as good as any we've gone on. Highly recommend it. Even with our complaints, again, this, we loved this trip. Well, and for us, it's 
great, right? Because we're only a drive away from Galveston. We yeah. didn't have to deal with having a flight in between and any potential cancellations that may have occurred there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it's an easy, an easier planning vacation because you totally. can just get on the ship and go. And, get, and then you can just, just kick back and relax. You don't have mm -hmm. to move anything. And you wake up the next morning, you're in a new beautiful place and cruising is just great. I hope you get a chance to do it. Um, one secret, my favorite secret, on the 13th floor, there's a bar called Oliver Twist. So super cool view up here. This is the Olive, Olive or Twist, Oliver Twist. It's a play on words, but this would be a cool place to hang out. Great view of the whole ship. A lot of, not a lot of people know about it. Go up there, check it out. I was up there the other day and this beautiful storm rolled in and I watched the whole thing unfold and it was one of the coolest things i've ever seen but you can also just watch everything going on from a really great view so yeah go check that of, out that's one of those getaway locations it's really busy at night because then they you know turn it into a club for any of their different activities but during the day it's pretty chill totally so anyways thank you for watching guys i hope you subscribe i don't know if we'll do this again but it certainly was fun if you didn't catch our previous videos of the whole trip i'll play i'll I'll put them right here. You can click them at this point and go see them right now. We had a great adventure and it was a great time. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Love you. Bye.